Today's video is made possible by our friends at Simply Safe, where there's no safe like Simply Safe. Beloved, welcome back. In today's video, I guess in the series of how to set up a 1940s era, the old style logging camp or elk hunting camp, we are gonna be, I'll show you about putting wood stove or installing a wood stove in a traditional canvas tent. Now, these wood stoves like this one here, we used to use elk hunting and they're lightweight. They can be packed on horseback or even man packed, uh, but it gives you the ability in any environment to stay warm as a bug in a rug. Let's take a look at the stove and then we'll do the full install with the jack on the 14 by 16 canvas wall tent. Goodness, this brings back memories. Your pack stoves are going to have a couple things in common. Usually they're going to have a set of built-in feet. Now, run these out here, gets it off the ground. Some of them you can even store the chimney pipe inside, but not this one. Once you get this set, you're going to have a pretty con conventional damper system and small door. You can see it's only going to receive small material, but, uh, but you, can, you can heat uh, pretty good. You keep this going 12 hours or so if you damp it down, no problem. The intake for the back there for the stove. And then sometimes there's even a hot water option where you can put a hot water tank that clips on here so you have hot running water all the time. When you're putting a wood stove in a tent, the best practice is to come in and put it at the entrance, either to the left or the right. You're carrying firewood in, you're making quite a mess. You don't want to traipse through the whole tent. Usually your cooking and sleeping will be towards the back. Your stove pipe is going to be like this. This looks like it's probably about five inch or so. And it's just a lightweight stove pipe that can be disassembled. You can lay it flat. And in one piece, uh, Granddad always put an additional damper. Now this in here is kind of a baffle that you can install in your pipes. And by turning this, it will, it will either close or open and just helps hold the fire in there a little bit longer. It gives you a little bit more control. And usually I'd put that damper in the first or second section. Let's go get the stove jack cut out and then we'll get everything installed and the fire lit up. We're gonna mount our stove on the left side as we walk in. Now any proper tent will have what they call a stove jack. And this is a, a piece, a, a section that's designed to put a chimney in. It's not cut out because guys will have different sizes. So you'll have to do this on your own. But there's a fireproof material here that keeps it from catching fire. Back in the old days of our canvas tents, we always had to worry about this. My granddad would actually sandwich a piece of metal on there, and we, had, we actually had tents catch on fire. So that's always a problem. If we go to the outside, this is a white duck 14 by 16. They provided this for us. Now, don't make the mistake that I did on the first one and forget to close this up. I cut a, when I cut a hole from the inside, I cut through that protective cover. So we'll roll this up, get out of the way. I learned my lessons slow, beloved, but eventually I do learn them. Properly built canvas wall tent is really something handy to have. It gives you the ability to have your family live in comfort in pretty much any environment. This is uh, the reason for these flaps is that if you don't want to use your stove in the summertime, you can cover this up. And if you do get rain, you're not going to get everything wet inside. So you don't want don't cut this. Measure twice and cut once before we cut. Just verify your ho your, your, the diameter of your uh, chimney pipe. Now you're gonna have a crimped end and then you're gonna have a non crimp end. That's how sheet metal, how you get it to fit together. It's a special crimping tool that makes it smaller so they can meet together. This is the male that goes into the female. So take the female section. We can see right there that they already did our work for us. So if we cut just right inside that stitching, that'll be our five inch. To cut out your stove jack. You could just use a good, make sure you have a good sharp knife. I have right here. One of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. My friends from North Carolina gifted me with a new bushcraft knife that will certainly replace my spider coat. So we're gonna be trying this out for the very first time. Let me know if you want a review on this. I'll be happy to do it. Let me use it for a couple of weeks first, but uh, we'll use this to cut it out. Since I know you're gonna ask, this knife's made by the primitive woodsman in North Carolina. North Carolina man's not to be confused with filthy East Coast man. This fireproof material can take quite a bit of heat. There it is, gentlemen. Goodness, I was wondering why is it so hot in here? I got my windows all closed up. Let's get these open up, get some cross ventilation going. Let's get it set up. Now, if you have any sort of a ground cover, uh, my granddad used to put down, he used to get like an old canvas tarp or an old car piece of carpet and put down. Uh, you don't want to put your stove on that. You should have your stove on uh, 
native native soil scrape off the grass so nothing ignites and have that down to mineral soil but put your first section in and then i like to put my damper section in next if you put the damper section too close to the firebox it tends to burn them out and they uh they won't last very long but if you bring it up one section then they'll last a lot longer and they're a whole lot easier to put together if you match up the seams seam to seam i start that in there and then just press them in a little bit and they'll fit right together a proper stove jack should be placed a good no less than two feet away from the edge the sides of the walls you don't want to catch these on fire now i'll poke this out And then make sure everything's plumb and straight. You want to look like you know what you're doing. Man, this is good living. If you're a man, if you're not, you don't have a woman attached to you. Is this not all we need? We could live very comfortably, very happy by ourselves, but good luck getting a woman, woman to do this. There are few and far in between that would put up with this, but uh, maybe you find one. Beloved, it's more important now than ever to have a reliable security system for your home or shop. Our friends at Simply Safe have got a new camera that they just sent me that I've been waiting for. It's a wireless interior camera, and this thing is just full of tech. Not only does it give you the ability to watch what's going on in your home online in real time, but it's wireless, so you don't have to run wires. You can put it anywhere. You can put it in a car. You can put it in a remote shed without power. Not only that, but this will trigger your alarm system. If you have an intruder, it will activate the alarm, it will contact dispatch, and they will actually be able to communicate with the would-be intruder as well as you yourself. It's got night vision compatible, and this is really a game changer for us. Let me show you the app. With summertime here, we spend a lot of time away from home, and I get a real peace of mind being able to check what's going on in the shop and around the perimeter. I have multiple cameras outside and inside, and at a glance, I can quickly check and see what's going on. Not only that, but I can communicate if someone had a question or I wanted to ward off someone that wasn't, was, a, was, was not supposed to be around here. The app is easy to use. The system is something you can install yourself. You can order online, you can order on the phone. They'll deliver it right to your front door and it's easily installed by anyone. No special skills, no service contracts. You can cancel at any time and the service is cost less than a dollar a day to protect your home. Our friends at Simply Safe are offering a very generous discount this month. If you sign up for Fast Protect, you can get 20% off your system as well as your first month free. Go to simplysafe.com forward slash Wrangler Star and customize yours today. That looks pretty good. You can see lots of distance there. We're not worried about starting a fire. Got plenty of distance, probably good three feet on the backside. Now this is the perfect area uh, to stack your firewood but leave a little spot open so you can dry your clothing as well. We'll build a, dry, a drying rack uh, in one of the next episodes of how you can dry your blankets, boots, and clothes if you get all wet. Outside, we can see our chimney up high. Now, if you're burning stuff that, has a, that throws a lot of sparks, sometimes it's a good idea to put a piece of wire mesh over there so you don't burn holes in your tent. I burn pretty consistent clean wood. And in a real high wind, You'll have to support that. We won't need that right now, but I can show you that in the future as well. The next thing we're gonna need is a proper chopping block. With our stove in, we can start putting together our hearth. Now there's a few tools that no professional pro ho is gonna wanna have his camp set up without. And this is the way granddad always did it. Uh, a good heavy splitting mall. I'll put links to my favorite stuff. Uh, I'll pin it to the top comment if you'd like to take a look at those. Uh, but a good heavy mall uh, for breaking up rounds and a good camp hatchet, something that's got some weight in it that you can split kindling with and because you got a small stove here, the pieces you bring in are gonna to need to be chopped down. So you wanna have something with some weight as well as a chopping block. And I like to have a good kindling or firewood carrier, a canvas carrier, or you can keep your kindling cut in there uh, and just be able to grab it and move it around. It's, it's kind of handy. So let's take our picaroon and go get us a chopping block. I got this round I cut off from the anvil stand that should work just about right. This is a little bigger than what we need, but it's got some checking in it. 
when it gets next to that stove, it's going to split in half anyway. We'll burn it for firewood, and next time we cut a cord, we'll get a smaller one. I think it'll work for us. Not flush with the front of your stove. If you get a brand new stove, it might have some paint or oil on it. Light it outside. Don't season it inside your tent. Let it burn off everything. You don't, you don't want that smell embedded into the cotton canvas. But an old tent like this is long since done off gassing. Make sure you always sheathe your ax. You can kick these with your feet and lose a toe. If you don't have a sheath, always store your ax with the blade towards a chopping block like that. That way, if anyone were to kick it, uh, they wouldn't get cut. But a sheath is best. And the best way to start a fire, of course, is the top-down method. If you put a few larger pieces in the bottom, and then crisscross your smaller pieces, Depending on your stove, you know, this will vary, but you're just kind of alternating, leaving a little air space. Once you get it going and get some heat in it, you'll just be able to throw anything in you can fit. Luckiest moth in the world. When your fire's starting, open your damper all the way. Once you start getting some heat in it, some coals established, then you can turn it down and your wood will last a lot longer. And that's it, gentlemen. That'll give you all the heat you need for any environment. Now, if you're in heavy snow country, the snow will build up and can cause a problem. It can tear your tent or knock it down, even break down the frame. So keeping a fire going all night is going to be important. If you keep that fire going, it'll keep it warm enough that that tent won't, that snow won't stick. So designate, designate one man in your group uh, and alternate. Uh, he has that responsibility to get up and stoke the fire once or twice a night, depending on your stove. Next video, I'll be showing you the lighting solution, traditional lighting, how you would light a tent, especially in the winter months when it gets dark. It can be pretty gloomy in a tent if you don't have light uh, to uh, do stuff, play cards, read and such and I'll show you the traditional method in the next video. So if you enjoy this series, I encourage you to subscribe and hit the thumbs up and uh, keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families, and we'll see you guys all on the next video.